Hey guys, Anna here. Hey, I want to apologize for the quality of this video. I hope to upload one that looks better and is in daylight the whole time. Um, but for now, this is going to do because I've had so many requests for it. I just wanted to get it out there. This is from my Instagram account. If you're ever interested in just my everyday goings on as a DIY dyer, a natural dyer, um, check out my Instagram that is just practical and pretty, one word. And um, enjoy the video. Hopefully you find it a little bit educational. I also put a link <clears throat> down below with my like recipe included and all of the tips that I say here in written form, if you prefer that or if you want to print it out or whatever you want to do. Bye. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I've got 100 grams of soda ash, 20 grams of pre-reduced indigo, and then I've already dissolved some urea in this water. These are my pre-folded towels. And so now I'm gonna mix my vat. Okay, I always do my soda ash first. And then I pour this in right after. And usually I use a paint stirrer, but I can't find it for the life of me. So we're using this thing. And you stir it in one direction. Only go one direction. If you stir it the opposite direction, it can get too much air in it. And the oxidization is what gives it its dark blue color. So you don't want, you don't want any oxygen down below the surface. I mean, obviously you can't help it on the surface. Hey. I need my hands for this part. Could you film this for me? I need to put my gloves on. Would you be a peach and do that for me? Okay. I guess I technically only need one hand. Okay, so I've got one swaddle. So I just stick it in very carefully. You can see it break the thing there. Break the oxidized seal. So I'm doing three swaddles and six napkins, cotton napkins. Okay, so then for this part, I just kind of gently push them down. I try not to rough up the water, but the more submerged they are, the better their color will be. So I do this for about a minute and a half, and then I pull them out. This is the best part. Okay, you take them out one by one and you don't wring them out into the pot or let them drip too much in the pot. So the dripping, the wringing them out, the stirring the pot in one direction are all for one purpose and that is so that there is as little amount of oxygen in the dye vat as possible because the color from green to blue is what makes it color fast is what we call it. All right, and then you can already see the difference. See this bamboo and this cotton, but I'm gonna dip them again and they'll get even darker. Hey, uh, you're right in the splash zone. And because your fur is a natural fiber, I'm afraid you will get blue if I drip on you. But you're needy for attention, so I guess it's worth the risk. Okay, and then I do it again, but my cat is literally right in the way. So if you could move, Sona, that would be stellar. I'm trying to prevent getting this on my mother's cement, and it's going really well. You got really lucky that time. Okay, here you can already see they're darker. Especially these cotton ones. But I've learned that once I do it, if I do it past like three dips, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So three dips gets me my darkest color. And I've done like trials with it where I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dips. And three is like the darkest I could get anything. So that shit's so dark. Okay, I lied. This is my favorite part. 
is the unwrapping of them. This is the only one I can do with one hand, so look at that. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't do this with one hand, you guys. I tried. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. It's way dark, so you can't see a lot of it. But those are the napkins. And here are my swaddles. Um, so this was just folded into squares with one rubber band. This was just wadded up in a ball. And this was folded into my diamond pattern. And when people see this, they go, oh my gosh, it's like black. But you have to remember, I rinse most of, the, most of that washes out. So it's, it is blue, like the typical shibori blue. And I'll show you when they're done. Okay, so here's something interesting. People think a lot of times, and with, with synthetic dyes, this is true. But with these dyes, the longer you let them just sit with that color without rinsing them out, the color starts to pull out of it. So what I do is I rinse them within five minutes of pulling them out. So I need to go out there and rinse them. Honestly, usually I stick them in my washer and my washer does so much dye that it's dyed. But Ryan just started a load of laundry, so I didn't plan ahead.